spectacle or did we made it or did we made it open usable useful and reused well open first uh op by open i mean freely available and accessible without any restriction putting a zip file somewhere on the internet is not enough to declare your data open <clears throat> Uh, and uh, with the GBIF, we rely on a rapidly growing distributed network of data publishers. They are guided or supported by national nodes, such as Belgian biodiversity platform, and supported by an efficient uh, secretariat based in Copenhagen. These large uh, communities is really uh, important because we exchange our best practice and uh, this is how we made things open uh, more and more. So this is a small graph that show you uh, in the center, the GB secretariat and then different countries. Uh, on the right side, you see Sweden, uh, Belgium, and France. And in Belgium, for the Belgian biodiversity platform, you see all the different institutes. The national nodes uh, collaborate with uh, 20, about 20 institutions, such as universities, museums, regional nature agencies, NGOs. And uh, in other countries, we have similar structure that helps the local uh, uh, data publishers. Usable. Uh, here, by usable, I mean that uh, you're able to or fit to be used. And how does it come uh, in our cases? Uh, because we are describing <clears throat> the, the biodiversity entities and their attributes, and we are doing that uh, by mapping the prior, the proprietary database of the data owner into Darwin Core concepts. These Darwin Core terms uh, are defined. They use closed vocabulary that are standardized by the community, and uh, they are also evolving, of course. And uh, these uh, data sets are then packed into an archive file. Uh, one of these uh, Darwin core terms, it's a little bit, a little bit small on your screen, but uh, is the organism quantity. So you can see uh, that uh, this has a definition. It has some examples and notes. So people know, know how to uh, use and refer to this organism quantity. But, uh, of course, uh, one size does not fit all, and there are many ways to express the, the, the quantity of organism. Therefore, the Darwin core uh, has uh, another term, which is the organism quantity type. And it allows the data owner to express different measure for, data, for organism quantity. It can be different things, number of individuals uh, or biomass or any other uh, possible uh, terms. So useful, what is uh, useful? Uh, I would say it's able to be used for a practical purpose in several ways. So not necessary for the same, in the same ways as it was described by the data owner. And for this, we use not only the Darwin core uh, star schema, I will show you in a moment, but also uh, metadata. And uh, GBIF community has uh, decided to use the ecological metadata language, which gives a very nice description of taxonomic coverage, graphical and time coverage. We also decided after a while to use CC licenses, three CC licenses, and mostly two CC licenses, either CC0 or CC BY. Uh, but we also uh, 
let the use the, the authors give their preferred citation and we keep of course the emails of the, the authors of the data for uh, user feedback so DAO in core archive is nothing very special it's a bunch of uh, data files like you see uh, on the left uh, the event core plus uh, occurrence extensions or measurement extensions plus the metadata and the uh, uh, eml uh, metadata and we zip all that together in uh, Darwin Core Archive. How can it be reused? Uh, discovering the data can be done uh, by uh, in uh, multiple ways. It can be done uh, globally in the global portal. It can be done locally, or even directly from the from the data owner. Uh, and uh, this can be. Uh, done in uh, various format and uh, through the most important uh, programming uh, language it's uh, interoperable so that uh, the data uh, the, the, the interoperability of this data we make sure that the user can make their desired queries to refine what they really want and they get this uh, with the in a json uh, web services so this is one example of uh, reusing or downloading the data with the, the Python uh, library of JBIF. You can, if you prefer, and you're using R, you can do the, basically the same thing with R. So, but reused meaning also that you need some kind of citation mechanism. And since a uh, uh, couple of years now, we uh, assign a digital object identifier to every data set. And we, when you download the data from GBIF, you also get your own DOI for the download, which uh, give a nice way to trace uh the, your usage back to the original data set that you have downloaded and with this gbif can do some uh, literature uh, tracking in, in this slide you see the number of peer-reviewed publications that are uh, especially mentioning that they are using gbif mediated data so that's scientific people writing articles, uh, peer-reviewed article uh, using GBIF mediated data. As you can see, it, uh, it's rapidly growing. Uh, uh, if you see in uh, 2020, we are close to 1,000 peer-reviewed article uh, mentioning this kind. It's an excellent uh, measure of the scientific reuse, at least, of GBIF data. Decision-making reuse is really harder to track, but uh, yeah, we think about that. Uh, we will talk about that. So the present now, where are we today? Uh, on these two maps, you see the, the data publisher distribution in uh, 2013 and in 2020 today. Uh, you see at the bottom, uh, there is much more coverage today than uh, seven years ago, and the number of publishers has kind of tripled. So that's also uh, very good. The numbers are also quite uh, impressive. It's 1.6 billion occurrence uh, records coming from more than 50,000 data sets. Uh, GBIF initiative is uh, managed by 62 country participants and 39 uh, org organizations. And there is something like 61 billion records download per month on average. Uh, I have exactly the same statistics for Belgium and how does it compare? Well, it's not it's really not too bad for such a little country we have 40 million uh, occurrence records at the moment coming from more than 300 data sets 
from 20 publishers. And uh, the, the Belgian sci uh, scientists have uh, written something like 400 papers that uh, make use of uh, GBIF data or reuse of data. That's really good. Uh, here you see the the, the spread uh, of the Belgian data by taxonomic group. It's mostly animals and plants and a little bit of everything else, but uh, it's a good, I would say it's a good distribution already. We have a, a Belgian uh, biodiversity data portal, which is Seeken based. Uh, it presents all the Belgian data sets and all the peer reviewed articles uh, from Belgian authors. And uh, if you visit this and uh, try to make some uh, fine grained uh, query, you will be redirected to the global portal. The global data portal uh, gives you a, a a very nice view on the data. It can be a tabular view, a gallery, map, taxonomy, and matrix. We'll see that uh, in a moment. So that's the kind of tabular table. You can see on the left that you can make your own query filters uh, based on any of the Darwin core terms. And you can save your query and come back later uh, to make the same query again with uh, and get more data for uh, for your query. So that's the kind of nice tools that the global portal offers you. You can also discover uh, the, the the occurrence through kind of uh, gallery because uh, some of the occurrence, uh, a lot of occurrence, uh, have uh, image or sound or video attached to it. You can also build uh, maps, and here you see data being uh, uh, published by uh, Belgian uh, authors. You also have a taxonomical uh, tab where you see the spread of the data uh, in the different taxonomical group. And uh, the matrix show various things. And uh, I would like to show you on the bottom uh, right, you see the pizza diagram that shows that most of the uh, vast majority of the records being published by Belgium are in CC0 license. So it's public domain. Anybody can do whatever you want with it. You also have a country page where you can discover uh, the data published by GBIF. And, uh, also the, the articles of, uh, of Belgian authors. So that was the present. So now what's, what's next and what's coming in the, in the future? Uh, we all know this pyramid diagram with the data at the bottom, and then you have on top of that information, the knowledge, and finally wisdom. Uh, GBIF traditionally tackles the data and information uh, layer. But I will give you what, in my opinion, are uh, the next step uh, based on, the, on these different uh, layers. First, on the data layers, we, <clears throat> we know that we have to fill the data gaps. And for example, uh, with the non-linear taxonomy, which is uh, the kind of occurrence where you don't really necessarily have species names, but you have something like, uh, for example, a DNA sequence attached to something that happened somewhere. And uh, that's it. We, the, the GBIF portal is starting to deal with that, and it's getting better and better. I think also in the, in the, the coming years, we'll see more and more uh, automated uh, uh, harvesting of data from uh, academic sources or from journals. Uh, and we have to prepare the, the infrastructure because for the moment we have 1.6 billion records. It's not that big, but uh, the, the growth 
is uh, is is really uh, important and uh, with new techniques it's uh, we will see a data deluge uh, and we should be ready for that uh, we should also modernize the packaging of the data using linked data or frictional frictionless data um, because Darwin core is still okay but it shows that there are, we are, we all know that there are some limitations and uh, in in this change of standards we should find something which is more strict than Darwin core but on the other way also more flexible uh, allowing to publish uh, other uh, data than the one presented by the standards in on the level of information i think uh, we will see more and more uh, artificial uh, intelligence or interpreted uh, data or even metadata because uh, when you run some algorithm on the data you can find a lot more than what a person can easily describe so that's a very interesting uh, future i think user annotation is there are uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> trials around that and uh, i think it's more and more important when uh, people are using the data that they can give their feedback not only to the uh, to the, the authors but also visible to to everyone and uh, finally uh, a big challenge is also to link uh, the occurrence data with uh, other related entity entities such as people institutions uh, literature uh, land use ecology legislation and so on and so on on the knowledge level, of course, this is the, the, the probably the, the more important uh, level. We know that we have to go out of the silo, of the biodiversity silo, where people know each other and uh, we are still working on biodiversity because this data is worth for a lot more of people than just the biologist. And uh, probably a, a solution like EOSC will bring us this uh, this next level of uh, interoperability between across different domain. Of course, the big uh, societal challenge like uh, health, pandemics, food security, climate change, everything need to be addressed with biodiversity data, or at least biodiversity data has uh, some part to play in that uh, in resolving this challenge and uh, for example the sustainable development goals is also something that we can uh, uh, tackle with the data at JBIF. So what's next if we see the the progress uh, in the seven uh, past years uh, you can uh, imagine that uh, the thing we have to to accomplish is to be truly global, have a truly global coverage with no white uh, countries uh, on the map, to be more inclusive uh, with, as, as I said, non-linear taxonomy, but also things like uh, indigenous and traditional knowledge linked to, the, to nature and uh, be part of the bigger puzzle because GBIF is not uh, the only player in that uh, domain and uh, I think the Alliance for Biodiversity Knowledge is, is really the good point to uh, address uh, the, the bigger puzzle. The GBIF uh, has to adapt uh, its funding scheme and governance because it uh, will become truly global, it, it will definitely uh, change. At the Belgium level, we need the data coverage. We need to reduce the fracture, north south uh, fracture. And I had a discussion on a previous uh, session uh, on that. Uh, at least in the biodiversity uh, domain, we see clearly that the north is having a lot more data, uh, open data, than the south. And we are working let's say every day to try to reduce this uh, 
this, this difference. To be more inclusive with the non-traditional uh, uh, data source, and also to be part of the, uh, at our level, to be part of the bigger puzzle with the initiative uh, in Europe like Disco, EOSCA, or LifeWatch. If you want to stay tuned and uh, read more about that, please follow this GBIF link, TEDWIC link, Alliance for Biodiversity Knowledge, and the Belgian Biodiversity Platform, of course. I also bundled uh, four interesting readings for you. The first one is a recent uh, article on data integration that enables global biodiversity synthesis. You have the GBIO, the Global Biodiversity Informatics Outlook, uh, the 20 year review of JBIF, and the last but not least, the, the GBIF Science Review of 2020. You have all that in the PDF with the reference you want to. So if you want to read that, you have these four things. And this is my last slide. I thank you for your attention and I'm open to any of your questions. Ha, ah, from Astrid, I see what is the current funding scheme and governance of GBIF. At the moment, as I said, there are 62 countries that uh, are funding uh, GBIF. So they are in fact taking part finan financially to the budget of the, the infrastructure. And with this uh, financial contribution, they have voting right to the governing board which take place every year and that's how the decisions are made so it's only the countries that have something to say now, of course there are organizations that have an observation status but it's only the the paying or uh, the paying countries or the voting countries as we say uh, that uh, make the decisions and this might change in, in the future um, I'm trying to see questions in the chat, but ah, yes, the big puzzle and uh, different initiative. I think we are. For the moment, we are quite good in integrating all the biology, uh, biological aspects. Uh, but as I said, it touched two different things. It touched uh, the, 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 the data that we have, they touch the people that collect the data or that uh, clean up the data or uh, that does anything with the data or the, the institutions. Uh, and not only that, the legislation that are probably referring to species uh, or to status of some species, all this for the moment is not really uh, correctly handled. Uh, you should be able in an ideal uh, linked world to go from one entity to another entity without having to uh, to take care of any technical difficulties. So it must be very easy to find from an occurrence to a species to the red list status of the species in IUCN, for example, to a legislation in your country that uh, refer to the species. Everything should be kind of linked uh, to make it uh, even more easier for scientists, but also for citizens to deal with uh, this data.
other question. Can you, I don't know if people can take the floor, uh, speak, or are they blocked? Uh, I can, un I can unlock. Yeah. Uh, okay, yes, audio. if you can, please. Okay, it's unlocked. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> So any any question, and uh, probably even I'm more interested from people that are not directly uh, working in the biosity domain, but uh, don't hesitate to ask any any questions that you have. Uh, Auto generated. Uh, I see a question from Inahi. Are the data available on GBIF are auto generated? What do you mean by auto generated? They are normally, there, there is, well, depends what you mean by generated. They are always converted to the Darwin core. Uh, but this conversion, uh, I don't know if that's the question. Uh, they are always documented with uh, metadata, of course, and they are interoperable, which means that you can query the data from the different source that could be, for example, uh, coming from a museum or from a university, from a, a camera trap or whatever. You can combine this, all these data in a query, in a very simple query, either on the global portal or through your preferred language. Yes, you can elaborate a bit more. Be good. Ah, it seems that people have problems to activate their mic. That's why we don't have anybody. Can anybody try to activate? I, hello, hi, I'm Vanessa. Hello. I was able to activate it by sort of clicking the um, headset icon and then it told me, oh, you're leaving the meeting and then I rejoined <laughs> to activate my mm. mic. Um, so okay. maybe that will help others. Um, I also had a, a question. I think I, I'm a math biologist. Um, I don't work directly necessarily with data. Um, I'm more in the AI data science mm -hmm. uh, part. And I think for for me, the I I acknowledge that the challenge is right consistency across organizations and making everything sort of linked appropriately. But I was wondering um, if, if if you had some thoughts on on how do we integrate people who are outside of these domains, maybe like right, legislators or or people who could support this initiative, but from a different perspective, I guess. Because mm. uh, uh, where I'm from in Puerto Rico, I know we have like uh, very few initiatives uh, where it's open data, but our struggles are like, how do we get this to the big players that actually can enact policy. And mm. I don't have many ideas about that. <laughs> yeah, I think the first step is to be very clear on the terms that you use uh, for the data uh, and the vocabulary, uh, the controlled vocabulary between be, be, be behind that. So if you use a term, what does it mean exactly for you as a community? so that uh, uh, other people with other background can understand what you're talking about. And uh, as I show with the occurrence, uh, uh, the organism quantity, what does it mean? I mean, for uh, a lawyer, uh, if, it, if he goes to the Darwin Corps, he can at least have the explanation of what scientists means by organism quantity. And this effort is uh, not negligible, of course. It's very important because in your institution, it might be something else. Uh, or in your department or in your project, you might use different terms. But the first thing is to have kind of 
common vocabulary of terms that you are using. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of data and you don't know what you're talking about. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Um, hello. Hello, Inari. Hey, um, yeah, what I meant by uh, auto generated was that the in, well, in one of your slides, you said that previously people have to manually input or something like that that's, that you mentioned. So I thought, as opposed to just data that automatically prompt to the platform or something. Mm. So the basically the it really depends how how you are publishing your data you can do that manually but you can do that uh, uh, automatically also so uh, we have something like uh, which is called uh, an ipt it's an integrated publishing toolkit that uh, can uh, for example connect to your database uh, and automatically every week or if every day, if you prefer, will take a snapshot of your uh, local database and publish this data to uh, the JBS network. That kind of uh, automation can be done, but none of the data are generated by kind of super data generator. So it's always data coming either from a machine or from a human observation. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I have another question. Um, I'm an artist based in uh, Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and I'm currently working on a project um, involving an invasive alien plant. And uh, I'm specifically working uh, with uh, well, a certain plant, and that's uh, well, coming from uh, water catchment areas of the Netherlands mm -hmm. because they're uh, unpolluted. Uh, sorry, I need to, I need some you know access to um, some unpolluted sort of um, patches of this plant. Um, so yeah, I'm, I was wondering if you if GBIF like it can be useful for like obtaining. Um, the info uh, about like where where they distributed basically where yes basically yeah. that's the, the one of the first basic questions that people often ask is what is the distribution and uh, the the answer that JBF can give you is not to see the exact uh, distribution area for a for a uh, species but at least to see all the occurrences that were uh, observed. Uh, in the past for a specific species, which is kind of the distribution area, but should not be, uh, it's not equal to the distribution area because maybe there are some area where people did not investigate or report any uh, observations. And therefore distribution of a, of a plant or specific, more specifically of an invasive plant, which uh, can change very rapidly is not something you will discover like that uh, on JBIF. But you will see all the occurrence, even the most recent one, uh, <clears throat> published uh, through the network. And uh, for example, in Belgium, we have a TRIAS project that was uh, uh, doing that for uh, gathering, uh, so putting a data flow of all the, the observation of in these species on JBIF network as fast as possible. So it all depends what uh, species you're looking at and uh, how the, the Netherlands are putting uh, an importance of uh, the occurrence of these species and if this is coming to GBIF network. But I, I would say make a trial and see what it gives you for the Netherlands. There is also a question from Lennart in the chat. In the chat, yes. Does GBIF already include or are there specific plan to include vocabulary in the GBIF metadata? Uh, the, the, the GBIF metadata is uh, <clears throat> currently following EML, which uh, of course contain, as I said, it contains 
different uh, uh, fields or sections of fields. And some of these, for example, you can put, of course, keywords on your data sets. You can put uh, a geographical coverage when you can say, or well, this kind of data is coming from the Netherlands, Belgium, and uh, Germany. Uh, and uh, in uh, some part of the, the metadata, I'm sure, you can add uh, terms coming from specific vocabularies that you use for that. Uh, ex for example, the taxonomy or a a other parts of, of the, the metadata, you can specify uh, your own specific vocabularies. Yes, so yes. Does it answer your question? Yes, okay. <clears throat> More questions, or at least I hope you enjoy the, the session. I will stay here for, let's say, 10 minutes or a quarter, an hour, if you want. I think Astrid can... Uh, give you access to the PDF version of my slides that contains a lot of links. It's okay. I will, uh... it's there. I, I don't know if you have to put a link in the chat for that or something like that. Or it can be done um... maybe. Yeah, okay. It's there, I think but now it should yeah. be possible for participants to to download. Yes. Mm -hmm. How can they do that? But if not, I think you yeah, for all the all the sessions you have kind of repository of the of the slides, so don't worry. And the recording of the session. And the recording. But yeah, the recording, you don't have the links uh, of the PDF. No, that's true. <laughs> so. It can, can maybe someone um, confirm that you can download the, yes. the slides? That would be uh, helpful. I don't see how it. I can't seem to do it. OK. Because I click to allow it, but it's good to know that's something I have to. Uh, Where would the check. button be? Oh. Can you click just on the presentation itself and then get a uh, Cloud 68? So they are helping us with the infrastructure and they are now okay. typing, so they will have the answer. Okay, Thank great. You. Okay. Ah, it has to be on uh, somewhere else on the. Are you planning to do that for all the sessions in the on the website or? We were planning to add the recordings for all the sessions, but okay, then okay. I will uh, add your slides as well. Yeah. Good. Hey, Andre, this is Leonard from Bliss. I have a quite specific follow-up question um, on my previous question. And mm -hmm. since this session is all more or less finished, mm -hmm. maybe I can ask uh, them. Um, so GB is using EML as metadata uh, standard, right? Yes. And um, I think in EML uh, 2.1, you can uh, in um, include uh, vocabularies, but it's not recognized as specific vocabularies. And only in uh, EML 2.2, um, you can link to external vocabularies, and these are used as external vocabularies. But as far as I know, GBIF is not um, upgrading yet to EML 2.2. 
Is that correct? And I other think it's correct. Like... Yes, it has to. You have to wait a little bit. Yeah, it's still not. Uh, it's still in uh, two dot, dot one, if I remember well. And is there a plan or a timeline? I, I don't have that in in mind for the moment. Sorry for that. Okay, no but problem. That's basically, one of the one of the, the most severe uh, limitation that I see for the moment in the data set is that you cannot easily link to other data being elsewhere in another data set or in another uh, initiative uh, outside of GBIF. And uh, that's the thing that you can expect to change in, in the near future. Okay, perfect. We are working on this and checking if you can upgrade our own systems to EML 2.2. Mm -hmm. So that will also be useful for our okay. data flow to uh, GBIF. Yes. So uh, another question. If we have um, EML 2.2 and in our IPT, is that possible? And will that pose problems to exchange data with GBIF? If you have for the moment 2.2. Uh, imagine, imagine that we upgrade to EML 2.2 uh, next week or so. Or is that just not possible in IPT? In the IPT, for, uh, as far as I know, it's not possible. But uh, you should probably wait the next version of the IPT for that. OK, thanks. Is it okay, Andre, if I uh, stop the recording of the session? Sure, for me it's fine. Yeah, no problem. How did we make it?